more than thee. And he's not suggesting at all that there is not an affinity for certain things that we do. He's not suggesting that at all. But what he's saying is that your love for me has to be greater than your inclinations and your desires. Because you cannot desire something and still not like it. That's our battle. That's the battle. And now, now he brings us and he makes some statements. The wages of sin is death. Gift of God is eternal life. But now he has to be talking to somebody who is moving into a mature enough level to begin now to deal with what I have to face afterwards. And that's a great level of maturity. And it goes like that. You gotta come home early tonight because you got to get up early. You, you, you can't drink till 2 in the morning and got to go to work at 6. Now, to the individual who loves drinking and individual who enjoys shooting them patrol and popping that great goose. And swallowing that blue moon. Red striped bear, guinea stout. That individual is not giving any thought to what time they got to get up in the morning. I tell you when they give thought to it. Is when they get up in the morning with the headache raging. And wish they didn't stay that long at the well the night before. Because now I've got to get up and be smart and be genius. And my whole mind is in a wreck. Because none of us in the moment. Particularly when we're in love with someone give thought to the consequences. If you knew that you would be facing the death of your marriage, you'd have passed that time. But you weren't giving thought to the death of your marriage when you got involved. See, the wages of sin is death. But now you've got to be talking to someone who can look past the moment and understand the consequences. Because our greatest regret was the consequences seem to be much greater than the behavior. Oh, I, wish, I wish we were sitting around a little table so I could just tell it as ugly as I want to tell it. I'm going to put it this way. And I can put it this way. You take it any way you want. Some people can sin up. And other people sin down. Now you got to substitute some heavy words for that. Some real raw words. See, some people can sin in a manipulative way to get themselves in a different position. See, see, some people sin out of just like to sin. Other people sin with a plan. I, I can't talk to y'all. So, so now, get it right now. Some people 
sin to make a move up. And some people sin cause them to lose everything. See, when you deal with the complexities of sin and the complexities of the human mind, you have to understand that when people are in a manipulative position and they're manipulating, they use whatever they can to move themselves, particularly when they don't trust God. And when you rebel against God, you can't rebel against Him and trust Him at the same time. Because part of not sinning is trusting God. Because sometimes we make a move in a sinful situation to compensate for certain things that we should have. Amen. And consequently, we are sinning looking for a result. And yet still, what he is saying is, whatever result that comes to you from sin, remember, the wages is death. So even though you got a temporary stay, you're still on death row. Somebody understand me, you see, see, because I'm talking to myself too. You see, it ain't just you that we're dealing with here; we're dealing with me too. You know, uh, some people sin and get get a temporary gain, but they still on death row. Oh, don't fool yourself. You're still on death row. You gotta stay, but you're still on the road because the wages of sin is death. Ultimately, that's where it's ending up. So no matter how good it makes you feel, it's heading to death. You know, I mean, you can go down, the bridge is out here. So you can go down towards the bridge in a Pinto at 80 or go down there in a, in a Phantom at 80, the bridge is out anyway. So whether you're having a lot of fun while you're rolling down there, oh Lord, I'm, Bottom line is death anyway. See, no matter how you manipulate and move and use, because people use sin too to get where they want to go. Mm -hmm. Some people will and deal it, but the end is still death. The gift of God. Now, you might not be enjoying life like the other person seems to be. Because what I've discovered is that the way of the transgressor is hard. Now, 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 now let's put it both together here. Uh, 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 if the righteous scarcely make it. So the righteous is barely making it. Because he's fighting a lot of different signals, a lot of different desires in order to walk to walk. But while the righteous is scarcely making it, the way of the transgressor is hard. You see, I'm barely making it on my way to a good reward. You're doing whatever you want to do on your way to damnation. So on the one hand, I am hurting and crying and paying for a reward that's wonderful. You are playing and enjoying and you are partying for a reward that's nothing but calamity and calamitous. So you are having a good time on the front end and I'm having a good time on the back end. Now who's better off? The one having a good time on the front end or the one having a good time on the back end? I suffered to get where I am. You played to get where you are. And consequently, because I've had both, I can tell you with some passion. I can sure enough tell you. See, and oftentimes you may sit down 
and argue the benefits of what you've struggled for and how, how much of a crescendo that is. But no one here can deny that the consequences for your behavior seems to surpass what you did. Now you may argue the good that came out of your sacrifices. You may argue that and sit around and have a debate, you know, I did all of this and, and look what I got for it and it don't look like I got that much for it, but, but now, you know, so, so it looked like good behavior doesn't pay that much. But consequential behavior seems to devastate more. It just, it just looked like I shouldn't have to go through all this just for that. It was just a little mistake. And, 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 and if, if you have followed the discourse, you, you see how many multiples he applies to get us to walk right. Yeah. The, the way uh, the transcripts is hard. Uh, you got to love him. And then he's got to tell you things like the ways of sin is death. And he's got to tell you the gift of, life, of God is eternal life. And he's got to make all these comparisons. And then it has to have the Holy Spirit talking to our spirit. Then the spirit has to make intercessional groanings, which cannot be uttered. And then, of course, we'll purify them by their word. Wash them through your word. And then you have to have the blood of Jesus. That's sprinkled on the word, which is the blood of Jesus. In the, in the Old Testament would be the blood sprinkled on the golden cover of the Ark of the Covenant with the law inside. And when the blood comes on it, it ceases to be a place of judgment. Now it becomes a place of mercy. But it can't be a place of mercy unless you know what the judgment is. You see what I'm saying? And so consequently, he's throwing everything in here. And then he's telling you, be not weary in well-doing. You see, because you see, you, you, you mess up, but you don't get tired messing up. But you get tired doing good. You see, and then, and then of course it doesn't look like it pays quickly. You say, after you have done the will of God, you have need of patience. You see what I'm saying? Because see, we want to step out of one lifestyle into another lifestyle and want instant gratification. Uh -huh. When you've been doing one thing for 40 years and, been, and, and you're dealing now with the consequences of the 40 years worth of behavior and you step in Jesus for 40 minutes and you want the whole thing to turn around instantly and, and you know, oh, all that's over now. And don't let the prophet lay hands on you and you feel like everything that was ever in your past is going to stay in your past. You spend much of your time, even as a child of God, dealing with the mistakes you made before you met God. Oh, I wish you'd understand me. Sometimes the sicknesses you contract before you met God still with you when you meet God. Uh -oh. Sometimes the financial trouble you contracted before you met God. Your credit was bad before you met God. And now it's continuing to be bad now that you know God. And now you're going to get mad with God about the credit he didn't do. You did that before you met me. Now if you follow my principles from here on out, well after a while we'll get rid of the negative and you start flowing in the positive. It's not going to be an instant turnaround. You can't stop an 18 wheeler on a dime. And your life was like a boat on the ocean. One of them big boats took a half day before that thing can stop. 